Hi guys, my name is Nick and I'm back with another video and today I'm going to show you how to make this little rover follow a green square using the pixie cam. Okay, so before we go any further, I'll give a quick demonstration so you can see what it looks like in action. So as you can see, when I move the square around, it follows it and it does it actually fairly well. I, I'm pretty happy. It's a bit bit jittery, but uh, that's more just to do with the robot than anything else. But, I mean, it does its intended purpose. And I think it's pretty cool that the robot itself doesn't have any sensors. It's just following what uh, the computer's telling it to do. So, I'm pretty happy with it. Anyways, now we can move on to like uh, the wiring and stuff. There's actually one more important thing that I want to talk about, and that's the pixie cam, which is the essential part to this entire project. Now what's special about the pixie cam is that it has a built-in color detection program. So all you have to do is specify a color, then it will automatically track it for you, and it will return like the x and y coordinates, the width and height, and a bunch of other really useful information, which makes this camera really cool and easy to use. I'll have a link in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. Okay, so what you'll need for this project is a computer, a little rover, an Arduino Uno, a pixie cam, and some sort of light source in case you're working in low light levels. Okay, so the robot I'm using is the same rover that I made in a previous video, with the only difference being that I taped two different colors of tape on there, and I'll explain why I did that in a minute. Now you don't really need to do this, but I thought I'd just show you guys anyways. So to connect the pixie cam to the tripod, I 3D printed a case which I found on Thingiverse, which was fortunate enough to have a GoPro adapter on it. And then all I did was I took a bicycle adapter for the GoPro, and just use that to clamp the pixie cam onto the tripod. Okay, here's the layout for the system. We have the pixie cam right here, and it's watching the robot and the sticky notes and doing all of its tracking. Now, it's connected to the Arduino Uno through the SPI connection, and what the Arduino does is it will uh, parse the information and then send it to the computer through a serial uh, USB connection. The camera is also connected directly to the computer, but that's mainly for power reasons and for um, the ability to quickly edit the colors that the camera uses because the Pixie Cam comes with a really nice Windows tool which lets you edit the colors that the Pixie Cam tracks. And then after that, the computer has a Java program running on it which calculates the positions and um, determines how the robot should move and then the computer sends a Bluetooth signal to the robot which then acts on that signal to do whatever it was asked to do. Okay, so here is the Java program for the computer. Now it's comprised of three classes. And the Bluetooth class is the one responsible for starting the program off. And it does this by creating a serial connection variable, and then it opens the connection, and after that it just waits for the program to end. Speaking about the serial connection, that, along with all the other calculations, are handled by the serial handler, Java class. So all of these variables here are either used for the serial connection or for storing the data that is sent by the Arduino. Now the most important variable here is the port name. Now this will vary for each person depending what COM port your Arduino is connected on. So make sure you check that out. Further down we have our open connection function. And all this does is it opens the serial connection with the Bluetooth, or to the ATtiny, but it also opens the serial connection to the Arduino Uno. A very important part of this is right at the end when it adds an event listener and notify on data available is set to true. 
This then allows us to use this piece of code right here, the serial event, which triggers every time the Arduino sends something via the serial port. And to make sure that it, we are grabbing something that is sent by the Arduino, we do, uh, if the event type is data available, then we know that there's some data there ready for the computer to take. Now all this code right here is just used to get the input string and then parse that into all the different information that we'll need for the calculations. This right here is just used for some, for kind of uh, keeping all of the angles together and within 360 degrees. It's just for the rest of the calculations to make sure we're working with the same degree kind of spectrum. Now here is another very important part because this is the part that determines what angle the sticky notes are relative to the robot. And that's done with this right here. Now we also add 180 to the angle just because otherwise it would be going from negative 180 to positive 180, but we need to work from 0 to 360. After that, we have a bit of code, and this is used for determining later on which direction the robot needs to turn if it needs to turn to get to the correct angle. Now this if statement checks whether the robot is within a certain distance of the sticky notes because the hypotenuse would be that distance. So that's why we have our a, a squared plus b squared and then we square root that to get the distance the rover is away from the sticky notes. So now if it's within 25 units, then we don't actually want it to drive forward, but we still want it to face the sticky notes so it looks like it's tracking it. So we do that basically saying if it's within 20 degrees to the left and 20 degrees to the right, we'll just stop. It's close enough, otherwise it would be constantly correcting. But if one of them is further away, then we need to turn to center it back within those 20 degrees on either side. And that's done with this code right here. Now, if we're outside of that 25 degree dis or 25 unit distance, then if we're within the 20 degrees on either side, we need to go forward in order to get closer to the sticky notes. So instead of writing a zero, we write a two. The rest is still the same, however, for determining which way the robot needs to turn to be at the correct angle towards the sticky notes. After that, we just have a close connection, and this is used when the program ends, close off the port, so it's ready for the next time. So finally, we have the Bluetooth Handler class, and this is, as the name suggests, the class which handles all of the Bluetooth connections. So the very important variable here is the address variable, and this will vary from person to person, but this is the address that the Bluetooth or that the program will use to connect to the Bluetooth module. Other than that, we have a stream connection and an output stream, and this is just stuff to then initialize the stream and then output data to the Bluetooth module. So right here we have our open connection, and all this does is it opens the connection to the specified address, and then it also uh, initializes the output stream so that we can send data to the module. Now the write function, this takes an integer and it writes that integer directly to the robot which then will act on that accordingly. And finally we have the close connection which as the name suggests it close the, closes the connection uh, and this happens when we end the program just so everything is nice and clean and we don't have any odd uh, errors or anything like that. Anyways, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Bye!